people always wonder about what the prehistoric world must have sounded like when it came to dinosaurs. But I'm here to question, what about arthropods? When the insects that we step on today were larger than most humans, what did those ecosystems sound like when they were around? Interestingly enough, there hasn't been too much research on the sound that arthropods may have produced. So this is quite speculative, with a good chunk based on my own research and own recreations. But I promise you, it'll be interesting nonetheless. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host bringing you today's video on the type of noises prehistoric arthropods would have produced. Although you might know them a bit better as arachnids, insects, bugs, and all that good stuff, it encompasses a very, very, very big portion of animals. The subjects we have today in descending order is the Mesozoic bush cricket, Arthropleura, Jacolopterus, and Meganeura. I think first we'll start off with the most reliable subject, one in which there has been more study and reliable recreation since made, this being the Mesozoic bush cricket. According to Bo Wang et al's journal article, this was discovered from a fossilized male bush cricket. These insects evolved to produce high frequency noises in order to communicate with each other, which I will say would have provided a lot of life during the time of the dinosaurs. So, I mean, yeah, it's a bit basic, we've all heard crickets before, but I'd say it's still interesting how similar some ecosystems can be, even with millions of years separating them. From the same article, despite challenges in reconstructing ancient acoustic signals due to limited fossil evidence, researchers discovered the earliest evidence of tympanal ears and a sound producing system in well preserved Mesozoic catadids. By analyzing their stridulatory apparatus, wing morphology, and probable singing frequencies, the study revealed that catadids had complex acoustic communication abilities, including mating signals and intermail communication by the Middle Jurassic period, and with that information, they were capable of replicating what these prehistoric catadids may have sounded like. So this is the example that they came up with, although they did know it is rather difficult to estimate the rhythm of their said calls. So yeah, I mean it sounds like a cricket to me. Now we move back in time, specifically over 300 million years back into the Carboniferous period for our next subject of analysis, this being Arthropleura, which is a distant relative to our modern day millipede. Though I would say a big difference between these two is that the Arthropleura is basically if our modern millipede ate nothing but creatine and went to the gym its entire life. Fossil evidence in comparisons with the related species suggests that the Arthropleura could have grown to impressive sizes, potentially reaching 2.6 meters in length and 55 centimeters in width. Its elongated segmented body would have adorned numerous legs, showcasing that, yeah, clearly it would be related to the millipede. Regarding the sounds it may have made, our understanding is speculative due to the limitations of fossil evidence in preserving soft tissues and, as with other arthropods, they don't have vocal cords and lungs in the traditional sense, so the sounds they made can't be based on that. In the current day, millipedes seem to stridulate or create a shrill rubbing sound, so that's a possibility of what it may have done. We can also see with its more distant relative, the centipede, that it carries out a similar action where it swings its terminal legs from side to side and stridulates, making an almost hissing sound. So considering that Arthropleura likely had had a similar design to both millipedes and centipedes, it makes sense that its sound and movements would have potentially sound similar but on a much larger scale. There have also been a few documentaries made about this creature, such as Life on Our Planet, which of course, as with every documentary, we can't say they were perfect, yet it does give us a bit of a better idea of the possible sounds these organisms may have produced. Plus, the series had many researchers on board, such as Dr. Tom Fletcher, to assist in its accuracy. The soundscape of Arthropleura would have likely been a blend of subtle movement noises combined with occasional stridulation, reflecting its unique evolutionary adaptations. To recreate this creature's sound, I used noises from millipedes, centipedes, as well as sampling noises from the Life of Our Planet series. Mashing that up as well as trying to scale it up, this is the recreation I made for this massive millipede. From the sounds of it alone, I don't think anyone would want to rock up to a 2 meter millipede whether it was herbivorous or carnivorous. But since we've got the largest millipede out of the way, I think it's only fair that we take a look at an arthropod even more ancient, that lived over 400 million years ago. This being the largest sea scorpion which isn't actually a true scorpion, Jacolopterus. Now this sucker was big, and when I say big, I mean big. This sea scorpion grew 2.5 meters in length and would have weighed over 200 kilograms. This truly was the top dog 
or well, arthropod of its time during the early Devonian stage. Now being that they were underwater, it does make things a bit more complex, but we can have a better idea when we compare it with its distant relatives such as scorpions and the horseshoe crab, which share a few similarities with it, such as having similarly sized eyes. I know, bit of a weird one, but hey, it's a similarity nonetheless. We can also compare and contrast with crabs and lobsters, as although they belong to distinct evolutionary lineages, they share some notable traits and are largely aquatic arthropods. Of course, when we consider the immense size and underwater habitat of Jacolopterus, we can go on to speculate further on the sounds and communication methods it might have employed in its ancient aquatic environment. Given its size, the movements of Jacolopterus would have generated significant water disturbance and currents. These hydrodynamic signals could have been utilized for communicating over relatively long distances, conveying information about territory, mating readiness, or warning signals to others. And though that this is a possibility, and though they were big, they were certainly not big enough for this to be quite effective over the distance that this seems to suggest. Instead, they might have utilized vibrational signals transmitted through water. By drumming or tapping on surfaces with their appendages or bodies, they could have communicated with other individuals or detected nearby objects. Now, while direct vocalization may not have been possible, Jacolopterus could have produced mechanical sounds by snapping their claws or manipulating objects. These sounds, although limited in range underwater, could have served specific communication purposes, especially in close range interactions. For this recreation, I use the horseshoe crab, emperor scorpion, and main lobster. Now, I won't pretend that our not so true sea scorpion has the best relatives, but I tried getting the best relatives of both worlds, being both land and ocean, as well as larger arthropods with adaptations for ocean environments. So, with all that and more, this is what I think it may have sounded like. <laughs> Now hey, imagine you were swimming in the ocean and then you came face to face with such a large arthropod. I have a feeling that most people wouldn't be overly excited. But finally, we have the Meganeura. This was a giant distant relative of modern day dragonflies that existed over 300 million years ago. Their wingspan was massive, being around 70 centimeters in length. And though that might not sound too impressive considering we've had two meter long millipedes on this video, just compare it to our largest modern day dragonflies, which only had a wingspan of 16 centimeters. So with this giant size difference, it's likely that Meganeura had distinct flight characteristics. Alan Cannell's paper sheds a light on this topic, particularly through Table 3, which extrapolates wing beat frequencies using different methods. What stands out is the inverse relationship between body mass and flapping frequency. As a result, Meganeura is estimated to have a wing beat frequency ranging from 3 to 8 Hz. Comparatively, this frequency range is considerably lower than that of contemporary dragonflies, which typically move their wings at around 30 Hz. Instead, Meganuri's wing beat frequency aligns more closely with certain bird species. This insight paints a vivid picture of the ancient skies, where these giant insects moved in a manner reminiscent of avian flight. However, these giants have their flight dynamics characterized by four wings and different wing shapes. This would have set them apart from birds despite their similar frequencies. Interestingly enough, there's a good chance that you wouldn't necessarily hear the same buzzing sound that you hear from a dragonfly. Rather, there's a good chance that you would hear each wing beat. It should be no surprise that I used a dragonfly as the basis for this creation, and this was undoubtedly a rough one to do. But here is my recreation of what this massive dragonfly may have sounded like. So though this flyer may not have been as scary as maybe a 2 meter long millipede, I don't think anyone would be too thrilled to have their eyes closed swimming to be faced with the giant Meganeura. So yeah, I mean altogether, one might argue that these arthropods may have even made stranger sounds than the dinosaurs, but maybe some people would argue against it. I mean we are used to these arthropods in our current day, it's just that these ones are on a much bigger scale. But for me, extinct arthropod, extinct dinosaur, I mean, who cares? They're all very interesting to look at, to try and understand, and I mean, hey, even to try to recreate. Although I'm not going to go and pretend like I'm a master recreator. I mean, clearly, did you hear those examples? But if you did enjoy this video and you haven't already, then hey, maybe you'd like to check out my other video based on dinosaur vocalizations. If you've reached the end of this video, one, I'm surprised, but two, I hope you all enjoyed. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, a majority of these sounds are what I believe these arthropods may have sounded like and are not to be taken as fact. Keep in mind that practically all recreations made, even by top T paleontologists, are still speculative, but it's always interesting to try. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, 
comment down your favorite extinct arthropod, and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.